Hey everybody, what is going on? Welcome to the 15th Practical Flash tutorial video. In this video, we're going to be working on our registration form. So there's multiple ways to actually generate uh, the HTML, or at least send HTML to the browser of the user. Uh, the two main ways that we can do that are either via Flask, we can have actually Flask push the HTML to your, uh, or at least push code that will render as HTML to your user's browser, or we can actually code the HTML ourselves. Now, I, per I prefer to actually write the HTML myself and pass variables via Flask to that HTML, but you might actually like the idea of doing everything or mostly everything via your Flask, um, you know, your Python files, basically. So that's just going to be up to user preference. Now, I will just say that obviously there's far more documentation if you're willing to write the HTML yourself. So you can find how other people are doing all kinds of fancy things. Whereas if you use Python's, you know, or Flask's version, you're going to have a little bit harder time to make it look pretty, let's say, or incorporating like JavaScript, that kind of stuff, to actually make your I don't know, your stuff look better. Uh, but it's possible either way, so just keep that in mind. So anyway, it'll come down to preference, so I figure why not show both. I tried both as well. I just still happen to like the HTML version. But uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So right now our, our register page is pretty darn simple. We just have, whoops, not that page, this page. Uh, so let's go sign up. Oops, that's not what I want. I want to go here, dashboard, then sign up. Okay, so right now this is our register page, not the best. So what we want to do is actually create the form. Now we're going to create the form all in Flask. And to do that, we're going to need a few things, uh, a few extra things. So first, we want to get WT forms, or what the f, f forms. <laughs> that's what I see whenever I see it. Anyway. Uh, first, we're going to do pip install flask dash wtforms. I think that'll work. Otherwise, we might have to do uh, sudo apt get. Yeah, it's looking like it's not going to find it. Um, feel free if you know the the, the correct pip install. Uh, feel free to post it below. But otherwise, I guess we'll just do sudo apt get. So sudo apt get install flask wtf. Ah, oh, you're killing me. You're killing me. Uh, let's try. Hold on. Let's try the capital, like W T forms, like that. And then, so we're okay. Fine, fine, fine. Let us. So, if you can't find whatever you're looking for, uh, let's get flask W T forms, like this. We'll just come over here. And let's see, WT forms. So flask dash WTF. Let's try that one. Let's do pip install flask dash WTF, possibly. There we go. So pip install flask dash WTF, sorry. But the actual module is going to be WTF forms. Uh, so now what we want to do is. Uh, we're not going to need it yet, but let's just go ahead and do. Actually, I'll leave this. I'll leave that one out for now. I was going to do the uh, the other package for uh, the passwords, but we'll, we'll leave that out for now. So now that we have WTF forms, the next thing that we want to go ahead and do is let's go up. Well, I guess we'll leave that out for now. First, let's just create our registration form. So I'm going to move this aside. And here we have register page, and that's fine. What we actually want to do is uh, do the following. And let me actually, let me go, uh, let's just open up Python real quick. Import WT forms. Okay. So yeah, that's why I was confused. The actual module is called WTFORMS, but for whatever reason, you, you install WTF. There might be more, or W, no, because it's WTF. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> Uh, move along. So now let's <clears throat> we're going to define a class in this class. So we'll do class registration uh, form, and then we're going to pass the variable form through it. So here we were basically uh, let me get out of this D Control D to get out of it. By the way, we'll go up to the very very top of our uh, page here, and from WTFORMS import uh, form. So let me just check that real quick actually from WT forms import form. Okay, yeah, so that is the right syntax. Uh, so we want to do that. 
so we can use form and our registration form is going to inherit from form so basically what that's going to allow us to do is create forms within python and then the, the actual um, the, the result is going to be a form uh, and then we can actually put logic with that form and do everything within our Python script rather than having to do the Jinja templating logic. But again, either one works. I actually tend to prefer Jinja, but anyway. Uh, so first of all, we're going to name some fields. So the first field that we're going to have is just a username field. So username is going to equal uh, text field like that. And then uh, we've got username and that's what's going to be basically uh, the val or the uh, the label to that and then here you're going to you can put in these parameters called validators and what you can do is do like something like validators.length and we're going to say the length has some requirements so the minimum length we're going to say is 4 and the maximum length is 20 and so this is one reason why you might want to use the WT forums because you're able to actually put logic like this in there and it's really quick and easy as opposed to you know having the post come in and then uh, Python you maybe have some quick logic that checks the length and stuff like that for you um, so to save yourself from having to add that extra logic you might want to use these anytime uh, you want to have like length logic for example so let's see did I clear that yeah so that's done okay so that's our username so we're allowing users to have as little as four characters in their name but a maximum of 20 then we're gonna have an email field and again it's going to be a basically the same field kind of so we'll copy this paste and this one is going to be called email address and the minimum length of an email we're going to say is six. I mean, you can't, you would have, even six is basically impossible, but whatever. And then max is going to be 50. Okay, so that's an email. And now we're going to have a fancy one, and that's password. Password is going to equal password field. And um, what we're going to say is we're going to say uh, password like this and then comma and then we're gonna have a list here and then we're gonna say validators dot required and then basically this is gonna mean that this is going to be absolutely um, required that we have the following so then the next thing is going to be validators validators dot capital equal capital T O it needs to be equal to confirm whichever one is confirm um, and then if not the error that is going to be said is passwords must match okay so we don't actually have this um, confirm you know so it's got to be equal to confirm we don't actually have confirm yet so we're gonna have confirm so what are we doing here this is the typical you know what username do you want what's the password to that username and then confirm that password because what if the user like typos their password well they can't even see it first of all but even if they could see it people would probably typo from time to time and then they would find out later that they actually don't know what their password is so that's why you have you know two, two passwords every now and then you still see people only like have like one password but that's a bad idea uh, so anyways confirm equals password field again uh, and then in here we're just gonna have the label be repeat password password like that okay and then finally we're gonna have um, the requirement to accept a terms of service so we're going to say accept underscore TOS and this is gonna be what's called a boolean field so this will be like a checkbox basically and in the boolean field we can put some 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 text data so our text that we want to say is just I accept the and this will be um, terms of service and the privacy notice and then we'll just normally you put it updated in here so we would say something like up last updated 
uh, last updated Jan 2015. Actually, you probably need to give the full date. So like, let's say Jan 15, 2015. Okay. And then obviously normally that would be some form of um, like this here would be like terms of service, for example, you would say href equals, and then we would say TOS like that, and then a okay, here. And then you do the same thing for the privacy notice. So again, you would have some tags here, a href equals uh, privacy, come on over, close off the uh, a tag there. Last updated Jan 2015, like that. And let's see, let me pull this up here. Okay. And then, uh, so that is your Boolean field, which begins with the I accept the terms of service and all that. And then you've got one more thing that we add. It's going to be uh, all the way at the end. At the end, you have your quote, comma. And then again, we want to have this uh, validators dot required required. And uh, what that is is that's uh, basically this right here is required. So it's required that this boolean field right here is filled. And say same thing here. This password is necessary, right? You have to have a password in order to. Um, to make an account, okay. So now uh, that should be it. Let me uh, make this text a little smaller. It's hard for me to see everything whenever we have that giant text, but it's easier for you to see if the text is giant. So let me just look at the form real quick. Make sure we closed everything off. Good, 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 good. I'll just close this one off as well. And then the accept terms of service validators require. Let's check that one as well. Okay, yeah, this one looks good. So that's our form, and then now what we're ready to do is incorporate this form into our um, actual register page, because right now our register page doesn't do anything but connect to our database and return okay. So now we're ready to actually build the register page, and what we're gonna do is we'll build that, and since we already have our database, we already have our connection, we'll actually probably finish the registration page and actually have a working registration uh, in the next tutorial. So stay tuned for that. If you have any questions or comments on this video, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.